It's live. It's live? Okay. So you want me to start talking to the camera first? Oh, we'll, uh, we'll show oh, them. Oh, it's live, that's right. It's yeah, live. yeah. It's so, not recording. Starts recording, so let's do this. So welcome, guys. Welcome to Smart Training 365 Live. First time we do live. And it's going to be interesting because it's something that we will talk about for the first time as well. And you will see for the first time. And I think you, you, will, uh, you will like what we will show you. So today I decided to uh, show you someone who really... Uh, a great cook, and you will enjoy the meal that he's preparing. I don't know if you know this person or not, but you might recognize him. Hey, Mo. Hey, everybody. How's it going? So, Doug, what are you showing us today? I, I wouldn't say I'm a good chef. I wouldn't say I'm a good cook, but we're going to do a meal prep. Mo and I are going to have some chicken and vegetables with an avocado olive oil dressing. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do this. Okay. So, let me get the angle good here. All right. All right. So, um, let's uh, let's have this thing back up a little bit so I can yeah. maybe put the cutting board here. Yeah. You guys can see us good, right? Okay, you want to angle a little bit toward the cutting board over here? Sure. There you go. Okay. So we've got our whole cooked chicken here. Mm. And the reason why we're doing this, yesterday I had like a long day, almost like eight hours between airports and flights, and I was so hungry. And Doug gave me this dinner, and it was like the first time I have, I have e ever eaten. You know, it was amazing, and you have to know about this meal. Okay, so this is a whole chicken. So we're going to eat the white meat. Not that the bad, the dark meat is bad, but we're going to just focus here on the white meat. So I'm going to take off the legs and thighs. We'll put these in here for now, for the time being. We'll eat those later. We take off the wings. If you're a vegetarian, don't, don't get mad at us. <laughs> don't get mad at us. Yeah, oh, this poor chicken, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're going to split this pretty much in half. So this is one breast right here. And then we're going to take the other breast. And you know what the breast good for, right? <laughs> I didn't say that. Mo said that. <laughs> All right. So there we've got both chicken breasts. Okay. There's still some good meat on here, so we're going to save this too. Yeah. All right. So we're going to do one cut first. Do you like the skin? No. You don't like the skin. Okay, this will be yours. We'll take the skin off. Yeah. I like the skin. I'm going to eat that later. <laughs> All right, we're going to chop this. Chop, chop, chop. Okay. Mo, can you grab one of those bowls? Yep. Put that in your one ear. One, either one is fine. This one. Okay, okay there's his chicken. Perfect. Now I'll chop mine. And I'll leave the skin on. We've already steamed the vegetables. We did that in the steamer pot. And uh, the way I do it is I use butternut squash and beets and green zucchini, yellow squash. I chop all that up. I put it in the pot. I put it in a big Tupperware container, which you'll see very soon. 
And then uh, I've, I've got enough vegetables to last me for about two, two and a half days. Then I make more vegetables. And pretty much I eat that in place of the rice or potatoes that I used to eat before. I'm favoring now what's known as low glycemic carbohydrates, which are the less starchy carbohydrates. They are less likely to cause a rise in insulin production. And so um, I prefer that. Bring yours. Bring mine, please. Okay, this is my chicken dish. All right. Clean this up a tiny bit. Yeah. That's how we do it. Okay. Now, Mo, why don't you grab your bowl? That's the yep. skinless. Yep. This is my vegetables right here. Now, this is your bowl right here. Okay, and these are my vegetables. So, I cooked these yesterday. Very nice. There's butternut squash, beets. Green zucchinis and yellow squash. We're going to use two scoops of this. Oops, that's yours right there. Yep. Two scoops of that. Two scoops of that. Now, we're doing this sort of the bachelor way. <laughs> Uh, we're going to use just a scoop of the uh, chopped tomatoes here. Now, I would like to be able to do fresh stewed tomatoes, but it's so hard to find fresh stewed tomatoes, so I end up using canned stewed tomatoes. All right, but the real key here is going to be the dressing. Yes, the dressing. Oh, my God. This is yours on the right. That's the skinless. Okay. Okay, so here's our bowl. Let me reach behind you over here. We're going to grab an avocado. Mm. Okay, here's the avocado. Oops. All right, so we're going to split this avocado right in half. Just like that. There's one. There's the other. Okay, now... We're going to take a spoon, we're going to scoop out, oops, we're going to scoop out half an avocado, put that right in the bowl right there. Avocados are high in unsaturated fat, which is one of the healthiest fats you can eat. Okay. So you have one avocado a day? I have one to one and a half avocados mm. per day. That size? That size, yeah. I eat, I eat pretty much three of these servings every day. Two to three, but never, never less than two. So now, I'm just going to mash this up right here. This is one serving. I'm, I'll make the other half avocado in just a second. Okay. This is just one serving. Okay, once that's all mashed up like that, I'm going to add a little olive oil there. Use liberally. There Don't be here. shy. Don't be shy. This is a very, very healthy fuel source. All right, now we're going to use a little salt. And a little Dijon mustard. Okay, we're going to match that up. <sighs> Very hungry again. You're getting hungry just looking at this. Okay, so what you find is after you mash all of this up, it's uh, it's still a little bit thick. So we're gonna we're gonna make it a little bit thinner. And I'll show you how I do that. High, high circular movement. <laughs> Gotta work some packs while you're doing this. Yeah, I see. 
Works the pecs. You can right. get a light workout. All right. Sometimes you can wear any wrist weights while you're doing this. <laughs> All right. So this is a little beef broth. Mm -hmm. Now, I couldn't do this with chicken broth. Either one is fine. I like the beef broth better. Just pour a little bit of that in there. And that thins it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. And makes it easier to pour into our bowl of food that we have sitting over there. And usually you do that when you start getting tired, your pecs are pumped. Yeah. So you reduce the weight by adding... B it reducing the resistance. Resisting the resistance. Uh, reducing the resistance. Right. All right, so there's that for the moment. This is Moe's. Yeah. Pour that in there. Oh. Stir that up. Now keep in mind, this the chicken and the vegetables came out of the refrigerator, so they're cold. So we're going to heat it up in the microwave a little bit. That way we have a warm meal. So that's about like fifteen hundred calories. I would say this is probably about a thousand calories. Okay, so there's a thousand. Yeah, maybe a little less, maybe nine hundred calories, okay. right around there. Okay, we're going to pop this into the microwave here. All right. Two minutes. Okay. In the meantime, I'll start getting ready, the next bowl ready of salsa. Yeah. Sauce. So this, this meal is low in saturated fat, high in unsaturated fat, low in high glycemic carbs, high in fiber because of all the vegetables that are in there, moderate in protein because of the amount of chicken that we put in there. Not super high, but hot, plenty high enough. If you have about uh, three of those, maybe four at the most, of those size servings of protein a day, you've more than met your, your protein requirement. Right. Okay, we've got another minute here on the uh, warming up of the other meal. You know, it really is important to um, get familiar with the kitchen. Yeah, for get sure. Get familiar with making your own food because otherwise you're just relying on restaurants or your mom <laughs> yeah. or your wife or your daughter or your sister or somebody who you think is is more, I don't know what, qualified. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't be afraid to steam your own vegetables. Right. I mean, look, I buy pre-cooked chicken uh, and make it as convenient as I can. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to have a refrigerator that has the things you need so that you don't have to get stuck being hungry and not having the right food. Right. So how, how often do you do your groceries? I, I go to the grocery store at the very least twice a week, sometimes three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes you forget that you need something. And, right. and you know, the, 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 the advantage to the way I do it is that I eat pretty much the same way every day. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, I'll tell you, it's a mistake to say every day, what do I feel like? All right, right. You know, you have to have a plan. You have to be prepared. See, I'm obviously prepared. Yes. More olive oil ready to what's, go. What's that olive oil? This is called uh, La Mancha. Hmm. Uh, or Hemispheres, I guess. I don't know. I, I, I'm I not, I, I wouldn't say I'm an olive oil snob. In other words, I, I can't differentiate okay. so much. Um, and some people <laughs> may criticize me for that. They, oh, you got to get this kind of, oh, you got to uh, <laughs> When I went to the dog park, when I used to have a dog, you couldn't go to the dog park without saying, what do you feed your Oh, you can't feed your dog. Oh, you got to feed them. It's like, oh, please. <laughs> Everybody's an expert. Everybody wants to think they're an expert. Anyway, I hear that one of the meals are done. Yeah. Ready to go. So that's one. Nice and warm. And I'm going to wait for him. I'm not going to start eating, yeah, even good. though I'm very, very hungry. <laughs> Plus, he wants to finish the production. <laughs> Look, I do the dirty work. I go do the uh, risky exercises so we can talk about them in the videos. And I'm hungry here so they can I can record and they see what you're doing. Right. So all these sacrifices I'm doing. You know. <laughs> 
So listen, I just want to say that, you know, once upon a time, we all used to think that we had to eat super, super low fat. And I'm one of those people. I, I used to think, and by the way, you know, we had reason to believe that the food pyramid tells us that we're supposed to eat the smallest possible amount of dietary fat. And then the, the base of the pyramid is, you know, grains, pasta, rice, flour products, cookies, bread. You know, it's wrong. It's just wrong. I mean, it may be okay for some people who don't have, um, who have a perfect metabolism, who don't have any genetic, you know, predispositions to overproduction of, of, uh, of, of insulin, but it, it, it screwed me up. It, it really screwed me up. It, I got away with it in my earlier years, but in my later years, you know, it literally caused me to have high cholesterol. And that's the thing is people think that high cholesterol is caused. Oh, people were commenting. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it caused me to produce my own cholesterol. And, uh, and he, he, it was ironic. I had a 290 cholesterol level. I was eating a, a, a super, super low fat diet. I switched to this, which is a fairly high healthy fat diet, very low in carbohydrate, very, very low in eliminating in starches and sugars. My cholesterol went down to 148. Mm. So imagine that I'm eating high fat, excuse me, I'm eating low fat and I have high cholesterol. Then I'm eating high fat and I have low cholesterol. Proof that we actually make our cholesterol. 80% supposedly is what I heard. 80% of the cholesterol that we have in our system is cholesterol we make not cholesterol we ate. So all this concern about, you know, eggs and beef and animal fats raising our cholesterol is mostly unfounded. Now, what I will say is that eating too much saturated fat does tend to increase your LDL. Whereas eating a lot of unsaturated fat like this raises your HDL, which is the good cholesterol. Yeah. So it is true that you do have to have a limit on how much saturated fat you do eat, animal fats. But it is wrong to think that you have to have a low fat diet. And so many of these products promote themselves by saying low fat, low fat, or zero fat. It's like, that's not the problem. Right. I mean, fat free intimates was a big thing back in those days. It's like, never mind the sugar and the flour that's in those things. You know, it's like, that's the real culprit. The sugar and the flour is the real culprit. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of beet broth to this thing here. Yeah. When you made the switch, did you feel that your energy? level dropped or increased? It actually increased. This is what's interesting is when I was eating rice before, I thought that if I stopped eating rice and substituted my rice for vegetables, that I would feel hungry after the meal that I would. Turns out that's not true at all. And probably one of the reasons why it's not true is because fiber, there's more fiber in vegetables and fiber gives you more of a feeling of satiation. Also, a higher fat diet stays with you longer. So you can eat a meal that is higher in fat like this and lower in carbohydrate and be fine for the next four or five hours. Whereas if you eat a very, very low fat or a zero fat meal that's high in starch, you could be hungry an hour later. Yeah. And, and, you know, obviously, if you're trying to be lean, one of the things is to not eat too many calories. If you're always craving food and you're always eating food that spikes your insulin, you're going to have a weight problem even though you're eating low fat. You know, one of the things that when I ate this meal yesterday, I was able to digest faster and I felt that I can eat again. So if, if I want to increase like my, the number of meals, yeah, this is uh, something that I can eat three times a, a day. No problem. I don't feel that I will, uh, it will make me, you know, uh, stop because sometimes when I eat something, I cannot eat for the next five, six hours. Well, I will say that, you know, um, there's been a little bit too much emphasis over the years on this idea of eating a lot of, of small meals. Yeah. You know, that was, that's what we all believed back then. And as it turns out, it's proven to not be so effective. You don't have to eat this. Um, in fact, they've even done experiments with one meal a day. I don't, I think that's too few. I think two is probably the minimum number of meals you should have in a day, but, but there's nothing wrong with three or four meals a day. You don't have to eat five or six. Yeah. Um, what does matter is the number of calories you get. Yeah. And, and there is a limit. In other words, you know, this idea that people are eating 10,000 calories a day because they're trying to bulk up. 25,000. Is that what they're saying sometimes? There is someone. Listen, let me just say this. That let's just say your metabolic rate 
pumps out, let's say, 3,500 calories a day, right? And it's true that you need to have a surplus of calories in order for your body to feel that it can afford to gain muscle, right? So if it feels that it's, let's say, if your metabolism is 3,500 a day and you're eating 3,400 a day, it's not going to feel willing yeah. to give you muscle. The question is, how much over 3,500 can you, should you go? Well, if your metabolism is 3,500 and you eat 4,500, 1,000 is plenty adequate to make your body feel not concerned with giving you some muscle growth. 5,500, 10,000, 20. There's just no way. All you're trying to do is make your body feel unafraid to give you what it considers is expensive muscle. Muscle is expensive because it requires more fuel. So that's the reason why your body would not give you muscle that it feels that it's barely surviving as it is. But all you need to do is make your body feel that there's not a shortage. A thousand calories a day, maybe even 500 calories, but certainly a thousand calories a day above your daily metabolic requirement is probably all you need. Going beyond that is only going to strain your stomach, strain yeah. your digestive system, yeah. strain your liver and kidneys. It's just good. And it's going to, it's going to put more fat on you. And then when it comes time to get lean for a competition, every pound of fat you have to lose, loses with it. Who knows how much muscle. So the more fat you lose, the more muscle you lose. So look, there have been lots of successful bodybuilders that have said, you don't have to get huge and bulky in the off season in order to be as big as possible, as right, big as right. your genetics will allow you to be come contest time. Oh, look at all these questions. Oh, nice. Yeah, all right. We'll look, we'll we'll look, look at, at them later. later. Yeah. Yeah. We got, we have a meal here to eat yeah. and you're sort of like joining us for lunch for the time being, but, but we can only do so much. It's the first. Yeah. This is the, uh, the maiden voyage. Yeah. Our first live. I guess recording podcast. I don't know what you Yeah. Doing. YouTube live. All right. Now I happen to like my food cold. Which is bizarre, I know. Some people think it's bizarre. When I was a kid, my mother used to yell at me and say, hurry up and come to the table. Your meal is getting cold. And I'd say, good. I like it cold. I, I've never liked, <laughs> I don't mind a warm meal. I don't like a hot meal. But I am perfectly okay, and especially for the sake of convenience, I am perfectly okay eating a meal that is, uh, is cold. Okay, there they are. Take a look. There they are. There's Moe's and there's mine. Chicken and vegetables, a la Brignoli and Mo. Let me try it. <laughs> I've tried it a million times, so I know exactly what it, what it tastes like. <laughs> no, he's being generous. No, he's being generous. <laughs> you know when Arnold said when he's pumping. Oh, don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. Anyway, yes. Well, thank you for joining us, guys. Um, it's been a pleasure doing this. Uh, you have to try it. This live thing. You have the recipe. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my kitchen. And I hope to see you again very soon. Bye. I'll, we will check the, the questions and the comments. Yeah, we'll look at them. How about carbs around training? Will you be uploading this to channel? I didn't see the last one. Um, you know, in what I do is when it comes time to get lean, I just reduce the fat. I pretty much keep the carbs the same. I increase the protein because I'll be hungry, but I decrease the fat because I'm trying to cut calories. Yeah. And calories are more dense in fat than they are in carbs. So it's all a matter of cutting. Not only, well, I'm already eliminating the starches. So the insulin thing isn't a problem. Back then it used to be a problem. That's... That's part of the problem with a high starch, low fat diet is that you're, you're pumping up your insulin production, which wants to retain body fat. And at the same time, you're depriving yourself of carbs. So the body says, what do you want me to do? You want me to retain body fat, but you're also starving me. Yeah. yeah. So that's why this diet works so well is because you're not pumping up the insulin and then you don't have anything blocking the fat loss. You're reducing your caloric intake and that allows the body fat to dissipate. Okay, guys. Thanks again. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Okay, so how do we stop this? Mm. Let me figure it out. It's still recording. Yeah, still recording.
That's what happens when you're making voyages. 